Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. With a recent dip on Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies, I thought it was a great idea to put together a video on worst trading mistakes for crypto and stock investing. Now this applies to crypto and stocks because essentially you are trying to invest your money to make more. So it's the same thing, it's the same human emotions and we can apply the same strategies across both markets. I obviously found out the hard way and that happened in property as well. So I'll cover a little bit about my background in this video in case you were wondering. Now I've got about 13 mistakes. It's not limited to these. You can make plenty of mistakes, but I thought this was a good start to at least check off your plan, check off the system to make sure that you hopefully don't make these mistakes time and time again. So we'll get stuck into that. But first, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel if you find some value from it, bell notification icon, and all of the links in this video are in the description down below. Don't be clicking on scammer stuff in the comments. Uh, one quick mention again, this will apply to any crash that happens. So this is a timeless video. If you need to have some reminders, come back to this video, save it in a YouTube playlist or any other sort of playlist that you have so you can come back and review all of these mistakes so that you can improve on them in the future. So how I got started in the markets, uh, I saved while I was in school, I wanted to buy property. I started property just about 15 years ago, I was around 2006, I invested, I bought and sold, I developed, I bought tops of markets on high leverage and lost hundreds of thousands of dollars. Fortunately, I'm still here to tell the story. Uh, I started trading 11 years ago and traditional. I traded traditional markets, stocks, futures, and now of course, cryptocurrency. And I love cryptocurrency because there is no leverage or there is leverage, but you don't have to use leverage to make big returns, similar to penny stocks. The asymmetric risk is there. So that's why I like these. And the way to make more money from it is not screwing up and making some of these really simple mistakes that you can easily prevent just with a plan, which is our first strategy here. So like I said, I've made all these mistakes and they're very common mistakes to make. So don't feel bad if you make these mistakes. I still make these mistakes time and time again, but they happen less frequently. And even some of the best traders and investors in the world still make these mistakes. If you think back to 2020, Warren Buffett buying into airlines, bought far too much of a position, needed to get out of that position and lost about $5 billion on the trade. Now, of course, $5 billion is not much in his entire portfolio, but at the same time, it was a trade that a very experienced investor made and quickly recovered from. And he has learned, obviously, from his 60 plus years of investing. A trip down memory lane, this is one of the properties that I helped develop in Brisbane. Uh, it's just in inner city of Brisbane. It was a five townhouse complex. This thing worked out well, but there were many mistakes that I had in this project. I didn't follow up with the project managers. They took their time. They started costing me money every single day because of how slack they were. The building company went bust and we had to find a new builder. Fortunately, the market was going up, so that saved us some money as well. And that's what I find now in cryptocurrency. The market is going up, so people are still going to they could get wrecked, but then they're still going to survive, provided they have some rules in play and they take action. So this all worked out in the end, fortunately. But some other ones, not so much. Buying tops of the market, highly leveraged in mining towns, so very illiquid. That, that sort of stuff gets you busted. So that leads me over to the first thing, and that is not having a plan. So define your goals around targets, around price, time, essentially how much time do you want to have in a market? What sort of prices do you want to get in and out of? What goals are you literally looking for in the market? Like how much do you want to make? Now these aren't set in stone goals, but they give you some sort of idea of where you want to hit, basically a target to aim for, so that when you're in a trade and you're up 10x, 50x, whatever it may be, you have a period or a time point that you can get out. Decide whether you want to look at technicals or fundamentals, a combination of both, and start to study that in particular, whichever one it is, in more detail so that you, you can become uh, an expert in that field. You don't want to be a jack of all trades because then your time is spread very thinly across many different sectors and you just don't get the same results spreading everything thin, especially when you're new to the market and you're trying to learn everything about investing plus everything about the projects. There is just not enough time in the day to do this. So get really good at one or two things, do those really well. Maybe that's even just fundamentals on Ethereum or technicals on Bitcoin and just know those really well. You are almost guaranteed to do better in the short, in the long term and short term 
if you just focus on those few little things rather than trying to throw 50 bucks, 100 bucks across 50 different projects and hope that one sticks. Speaking of which, decide how many markets you want to trade. That might just be sticking with five or six cryptocurrencies or 12. You know, I'm just pulling numbers out here, but you've got to stick with something that's going to work for you. This is the problem with a lot of people. They'll just throw a lot of money into a whole lot of different things. They're listening to YouTubers just like myself online and they're talking about different projects all of the time because everyone's trying to talk about everything because everyone's asking about everything and they start throwing money at a whole lot of different things. Just pick a few, focus on those really heavily and you'll do very well. This is what I've done, especially with my super fund, which you guys see on Instagram. So go and follow that if you're interested. I've picked two cryptocurrencies, Bitcoin and Ethereum, and I just hold for dear life. Hold on for dear life with those two cryptos. And as I get more money into my super, I just put that in. That's basically my retirement fund for you guys that are overseas. Uh, where will you keep your records? Make sure you have somewhere to keep your records. That's part of your plan. Maybe it's an Excel spreadsheet, maybe it's a notepad, but just have somewhere where you keep track of your results. Because if you don't track your results, you'll never know how well or how bad you're doing so that you can improve. Number two, and that is being too impatient. People get wrapped up with FUD, FOMO, basically trying to force trades, a lot of emotion gets involved. And when you're too impatient, that throws you from one crypto to the next crypto because it's not moving. Literally just before I turn the camera on to film this, I can read comment after comment, one in particular, someone saying a project hasn't done anything apart from go down. So if you don't have your plan for starters, you don't know what the hell you're doing, you're just buying something that is online, project goes down, then you sell. So you lose money because you don't even know what the hell it is that you're doing or why you're investing in something. And for me, I look at this as just be patient. If you have done your research, you've got your plan, your TA or FA, you've done your research, it doesn't matter if the project goes down because long term you can see it going up for X, Y, Z reasons. And that's just going to give you more ammo when the lows come in to keep buying up the lows. But if you don't have that commitment, then you could just miss a fantastic opportunity. The other thing about being impatient or not impatient enough is forcing a trade. Sometimes it's better to stay out of the market, holding onto your fiat. Yes, it's not going up in value. Yes, it's slowly declining in value with the more that they print. But crypto, we know, can dump 80% in a matter of weeks. So if you just sit on the sidelines and wait for that right trade because you've got your plan set up, then that money is possibly better off just in your account and not losing you money in a trade just because you feel like you have to get into the market. You know, you've got to be in it to win it. But at the same time, it's better to time it and just wait for a good time or be convicted on the trade that you want to make. So don't try and force trades. Be patient. Trading doesn't mean more money and this is different to a job. So a lot of the time, new people come across into the market here. They're from a traditional job. You, you might be watching this. You might be at a nine to five or trading your time for money. So the more that you spend in working at something means the more that money you're going to get. This is almost the opposite for trading. Yes, you have to put a lot of time into studying. That's not giving you money straight away. You, you have to put a lot of time into research. So studying the skills, then researching the projects or uh, doing your analysis, whether it's technicals. So all of this time, there's a ton of time spent there, but there's still zero dollars. Now, the money part is super quick, making the trade, hitting buy, setting your stops, setting your alerts for when the profits are, where the profit targets are, and then walking away. That can literally take two to five minutes, max. And so that is why people get really screwed up. It, it messes with your head to think that you can just throw some money down it takes you five minutes, walk away, come back in a week, a year, whatever it may be, and the money's gone up. But putting a lot of time into the initial study and research and analysis is pretty much where the money is made. So that is something that's very different from your everyday job where you go to work and you earn per hour and then you come home and switch off. That is something that you really have to get into your head when it comes to investing. So that's number two. Leads me on to number three selling the lows. Selling lows is obviously not such a great idea, depending on where you bought in. However, it's not always a bad thing. And now we've seen a dip in the cryptocurrency markets over the last couple of days. And you may be watching this again when there's another dip, or you're just trying to prepare yourself for the upcoming market, the bull market or some other time in the market, right? So it's not always a bad idea to sell those lows. For example, when we just saw the dip on Bitcoin, this is in uh, mid-April, 
I looked to sell out of some of my cryptos, which I wasn't so convicted on, but then I sold them into other cryptos, which I was more convicted on. I've done my research. And in that case, I have basically, both of the cryptos have gone down, similar sorts of amounts. Now I can consolidate and put more into one of those projects. It looks bad on paper because there's a loss here and this one's not making any money. But long-term, what I have found is that after I'm consolidating, that clears my mind of a trade, which I'm not so convicted on. I was just looking at it for a trade. And then it gives me more time again because I have less projects to focus on. So selling the lows isn't always a bad idea. But if you just sell them because you don't know what you're doing, because you don't have a plan and you're not patient enough, that may not be such a great idea. So definitely stick to your plan and have a plan if you're selling. Number four, buying the highs, chasing the pumps. This is why I said it leads back to patience and why I put patience at number two. Have patience. It's harder to recoup losses. If you get a 50% loss, you need that same project to do 100% gain in order to make your money back. Here is a graph illustrating that 50% down, 100% back. The project goes 60% down, you now need to make 150% back. 70% down, 233% back, 80%, 490%, 900%. So this gets exponentially harder to make your money back if the project drops. So in that case, have patience. Buying the highs, chasing the pumps can really screw you up. On top of that, we can look at our risk reward. Now we don't know this for sure when we're in a market. Say we're buying the tops, the risk gets very high because the market is very high at the moment and there's a lot of room for it to fall. And we may only end up with a reward of one. And so that could mean the project might only double or triple from this point, but the risk is we could lose 80 to 90% to the downside because the market has run so hot. And for it to come back and make four, to break even, you need, to make, you need it to make 400, 900%. Now, if this isn't making sense, slow it down, look at the numbers, start to figure it out, put it on a chart for yourself so you can really see how crazy these things can be if you're buying into the pumps. Now, a risk of, of one, th this isn't an, an exact science just looking at this on the paper when you have to relay it to your chart, but say we're looking for something that's more asymmetrical, something like buying Bitcoin or Ethereum at their bear market lows. The risk is it goes to zero, but the potential upside, the potential reward is very high. So just take these numbers arbitrarily and just look at them to understand that the risk is far lower buying the crypto or the stock low because we see a higher upside, especially if we have done our homework and our analysis and we have a plan. Buying these things at the top because they're hot and running, the rewards get lower and you really need to have a very high success rate of hitting your target in order to not get wiped out of the market. There's always more opportunities out there. It's hard to recoup losses, have patience. Think, oh, I've got here Dogecoin because we're just thinking about the potential losses here. If you're buying the peaks of Dogecoin and hoping that it runs up even harder, it you're basically swinging the odds out of your favor and not in your favor. So you really wanna be buying it and having patience at those lower points or at least when the market is quieter and no one is really discussing that project too much, but you have your conviction because you know you've done your homework. Number five, not taking profits, getting greedy and letting winners ride too long. Exit at intervals, swings, trailing percentages, dollar cost averaging in and out. So not taking profits is a huge mistake because people often, like we just saw with the previous, start buying the highs and maybe it only goes up a little bit further and you get really excited, but you've got to look at how far the project has come and be honest with yourself. Taking profits isn't a bad thing. You need to retain the capital so that you can live to uh, fight another day in the markets. And if you can't fight another day, then you're wiped out and you have to go back to your job to make some more money in order to come back and try again. And that could be many, many months or years, depending on how much you can save. And in that time, you can miss out on the bear market. And that is where the real, real possibilities lie. So you don't want to be wiped out for those periods. Take profits and wait for those periods as well. It's great to make some money in the bull market, but you're going to get rich if you are investing in the bear markets. So that's why I say here, dollar cost average in and out of a position. Maybe you start selling a little bit on the way up, but it shoots up even more. And then you start to see it come down. So you start to sell out again. So there's many, many different ways to structure your plan in order to get out and retain 
the capital that you initially invested plus make some profits. Number six. Now, this could seem like it's going against the first one, uh, going against point number five, not taking profits, but taking profits too soon. It stunts your growth and the big, the, well, the losses that you've made can probably wipe out a lot of small wins if you happen to be getting a lot of small wins. Maybe you're only making 100% on each of these trades, but every other trade that you've entered falls against you 80% or you get wiped out. So you really need to be making more than those smaller wins to the upside, especially to make up for the losses. So taking profits too soon can also wreck your account. This is a very difficult one to balance out in your portfolio because you don't wanna take profits at all, you, as in you don't want to not take profits, I should say, but at the same time, you don't wanna take profits too soon. So the way I avoid this is I study the market, have my money management, which we'll get to in a moment as well, st understand my money management and how far I need this project to run in order for it to balance my portfolio, take my initial out and make some profits. If the project continues to run no problems. I've made my money back. I've made my gain. I can survive another day and go and make another fantastic gain on another project. So I don't want to take these things too soon because I can lose those bigger upsides. Provided I've got my initial capital out, I can generally let a lot of the profits run and then I've got my moon bag sitting there. And this, this applies to stocks, penny stocks, any stock that has big potential to run. And of course, cryptocurrencies. Number seven, over leveraging. I don't see any point in getting into leverage trading with cryptocurrency when you are new to investing and trading and crypto. There is way too many things that can go wrong. If you are a superhuman genius, and there's, we've got to be honest with ourselves, there's not many of those, then you want to be able to sleep at night and adding another fuel to the, the massive fire already. You've got uh, your, your inexperience, like I said, with trading or investing. And now you're trying to add leverage on top of that with no plan, no money management strategy. It's just a recipe for disaster and easy way to lose your money in the markets and not make good of an easy opportunity, which is a bull market. Everyone should be making money in a bull market if they have patience and follow a very, very simple plan. Easy thing to look at here is if you can't sleep at night, there is something wrong with your plan or your inexistent plan, your plan that does not exist. Just make sure you're trading with what you can afford to lose as well, especially in a project. Even if you can afford to lose all that money, maybe you have too much in a project and it's just not comfortable for you. You're not certain, you're not, you don't have confidence in that trade that you're making, so you're better off selling out of that project, holding some in reserve, doing your research, waiting for a better opportunity. Number eight, fear of taking a loss. Easier to think clear when not in a market. It's okay to take a loss sometimes. I definitely take many small losses because the feeling I have of watching something run 60, 70, 90% against me is far worse than just sucking up and taking the 25, 35% loss, waiting and coming back. Because if I take a 25 or 35% loss, I'm sitting somewhere around here. I only need to see the crypto come back by about 30 to 50%. That's not too hard to do in cryptocurrencies. These things will move in a day 40, 50%. And so taking a 25 to 35% loss, even though it looks bad on paper, you've thrown a grand into a project and now you've lost $350, you only have 650 left, it could be made back quite quickly with a 50% increase in, an, in the next project. And we know 50% can happen quite quickly. So if you can understand those numbers, you now have a little more certainty about how you're able to trade and take a loss, not feeling bad that you've now, you're down 35%. The other thing on top of this is it's easier to think clearer when you're not in a market. So selling out of one of these positions, now I've got a clearer mind. I can look at my next trades, make some clearer decisions. But while my head's going crazy thinking about all these other trades that are going on, they're also starting to drop, it makes life very difficult. Basically, you're just, you're just sweeping out the trash and clearing up. That really helps your mental space and you need a good mental game in order to survive in this market. Normies, think losses equal bad. This is not correct. So that a bad on top of a bad doesn't make a good. Maybe it does in this case. No bad or good, just probabilities. So it's okay to take a loss. It doesn't mean bad. It just means you are following a plan. And so following a plan is good. If you start thinking of things as good and bad, it makes the decision making very difficult. So it's not a bad thing to take a loss at all. Number nine, bad position sizing, money management. Scaling into positions the wrong way. Upside down pyramiding. Greed masters confidence. Upside down pyramiding. I've talked about this in other videos before. That's your pyramid. 
right? I should have worn my Ponzi shirt. Uh, basically, you're getting in small amounts early in the project, and then you start to position bigger and bigger and bigger as the project rolls on and the, uh, the price increases. This is very bad money management because if that project goes against you by a little bit, not only are you you're losing what you've just put in, you are compounding the losses because you have, you've positioned yourself the wrong way. You've put in a ton of money at the top, a little bit at the bottom. This one's gone up 100x, but this one at the top's only gone up 100%. It's gone up 1x so you or 2x and you're just not getting the gains at the bottom to make up for the losses, the small losses at the top. So you could be in a winning position from the beginning, but end up at a losing position from the top and the market only has to go against you a little bit. This is probably one of the biggest mistakes that newbies make and it's masked itself, masks itself, sorry, as confidence and essentially it's greed. You see the market going up, man, I should have put way more money in earlier. Not the right way to do it. Keep them the same in terms of a dollar figure entrance or if you're trading with Bitcoin, the same Bitcoin uh, position size that you're putting in. And next time, learn where the bottoms are, understand that, and then you can position yourself better, putting a lot more money in lower and less money at the top. It feels very counterintuitive because sometimes it takes a very long time at the bottom in order for this money to pay off. But when it starts paying off, it is a fantastic feeling. And like I said earlier, you can follow me on Twitter and on Instagram and you can see my super fun portfolio over there where I've invested all of the money at the bottom, near the bottom, you know, somewhere around a 8000 ish dollar Bitcoin or a little lower, and I just let it ride up. But it took a year. My, my retirement fund was essentially doing nothing. And now it just started to take off and that's where you start to see the gains. Uh, it also happens in reverse, getting out. You know, you start to sell out just a little bit at the top and then more and more and more. And as the market tanks, you sell out all of it and you basically just turn a winning trade into a loser. The game is to stay alive and then thrive. So position yourself in a way that you're going to stay alive in these markets and you'll be able to have enough money in there and enough time in the market to build your experience to make this a full-time profession. Speaking of a full-time profession, there is the Investor Accelerator course that you can pick up. There's a link to that in the description down below. It's a 12 month membership, very reasonably priced so you can stick with these principles and learn them along the way in your cryptocurrency or stock market investing journey with a group of like-minded investors in a community over there. Number 10, using too many indicators. If you're familiar with my channel, you'll notice that my charts look boring as many people say in the comments. That's because I don't want the headaches of too many things that I have to look at. I want to be able to make quick decisions and having a clean white bar chart makes things easy for me. Choose what uh, works best for you. And if that happens to be a line chart and you have a strategy for a simple line chart, which is just basically connecting closes on a chart, use that. Don't worry that all these people are using 15 minute candlestick charts with a million different indicators all over them. You wanna be able to make quick decisions and feel extremely confident in that decision. That's all you need to do. You don't need to make something look extremely technical with a ton of different indicators and drawings all over it. Waste of time, waste of time. Do it initially and you start to learn, all right, I can clear these certain things off because they're not actually helping with my decision making. I just want the maximum or the minimum amount of things I need in order to make a quick decision. And that's it. That's, that's all you need in one of these plans. 11, buying bad cryptos, uh, crypto projects with profits, for example, ICOs and scams. So this is a huge mistake. I definitely made this 2017, bought into many ICOs with my profits at the top. They were big profits and those, two, those companies, they're not existent now. They're around the tokens worth basically zero or you can't even trade it on an exchange or they still haven't released the product that they said they would release. So essentially I can kiss that money goodbye. It's still sitting there in some token, but I have to just write it off. It's, it's done with. So if you've got some big profits, Personally, now I'm just very happy to put it into USDT, USDC, whatever other stable coin it is that you like, and at least that keeps them on the sideline. Having that in a stable coin allows you to live another day, putting it into some sort of ICO or some other project when the market is super hot and everyone is talking about it and there is fear in the stable coin market, I think is a very, very bad mistake. And from my experience, not worthwhile. Stable coin, even if there is 
bad news on the stablecoin. I'm definitely keeping it in the stablecoin over some crappy ICO project which promises the world and has all the buzzwords in the white paper. Scams are all the stuff that we see on Telegram, Discord, Instagram, Twitter, and the scams in the comment section of YouTube come in many different varieties. So yeah, don't be sending them cryptocurrency over there. And lastly, the belief in gains that will last forever and we continue flipping them like we did in 2017 into other ICOs, eventually, it all comes to an end. So really got to be prepared for that. As things get super spicy, it's probably the end of the market. Bonuses, number 12, looking at this, listening to random advice on the internet. I could just wipe out everything you just listened to for the last 20 or 30 minutes. You could listen to this, but take it away and put it into some sort of structure for yourself. It can be great advice. I find a lot of great advice on the internet, but because it's free on YouTube, there isn't much structure to a, pretty much 100% of the stuff that's out there. It's all great advice, but you need to structure it in a way that suits you. The structure here suits me. That's why I put it together in this way. But if it doesn't suit you, it's going to be very difficult to follow. So make sure you take what works for you, put it in a plan that works for you and go and test the plan. Make changes to the plan if you need to. Number 13, we're finally here. Choose the right broker. There's a pretty big problem with new people to cryptocurrency, potentially stock investing as well, but we'll focus on cryptocurrency for this one. Sometimes the fees are super high. Sometimes there is system outages. Have a backup and the slippage liquidity on that uh, broker exchange, basically those cryptocurrency exchanges. Here's a way that I look at it. Uh, I'm Australian, so I'll have an Australian exchange. I'll have a backup Australian exchange. I'll have an international exchange. I'll have a decentralized exchange. It sounds like a lot of work, but this is the wild west of cryptocurrency. And this is why you get massive gains. If you have everything provided for you, you're going to have everyone else in here and you're not going to be making the same sort of gains. So you just got to be prepared to put the time in to make the massive gains. Just like we've seen with a lot of the Ponzi scams, Ponzi coins that are playing out on pancake swap. You know, this is 2021. Ponzi schemes are playing out on pancake swap. So if you don't know how to use all these things, then you're going to miss out on the Ponzi scheme scams, which probably isn't a bad thing anyway. So just looking at this system outages is pretty much why I have multiple backups in Australia and internationally as well. So have a backup plan, have a backup exchange, look out for the slippage and liquidity on the exchange. So the volume that's trading, cause you don't want to get caught out with high fees and then not getting a good fill on the trade that you're about to make. That is my 13 common mistakes, which we all make coming into cryptocurrency. Maybe we make some, maybe we make all of them. Maybe we make more, which maybe they're, they're out there. Let me know in the comments down below. What other mistakes have you made in cryptocurrency, in trading stocks, in investing in businesses or real estate? Let us know in the comments down below and hopefully other people can learn from that and add it to their plan and be aware of some of these mistakes in investing. Now, if you found some value from that, let me know in the comments down below. Hit that like button. It goes a very long way to helping out the channel. Subscribe to the channel if you want to see more information on cryptocurrency and investing. So hit that uh, subscribe button and the bell notification icon. There's also a link in the description for our investors insider newsletter comes out every two weeks, absolutely free. It's on cryptocurrency and investing. So it's not just crypto, but there's a lot of crypto information in there. It's all free. Just check the link in the description down below. And like I said earlier, the investor accelerator, membership for crypto and stock trading link to that is in the description down below as well go and check that out i'll catch you guys at the next video subscribe like share but until next time have more fun to get more done